Hello and welcome to iGrammatic. My name is Gebhard Markgraf. We are in the presentation room here at iGrammatic. And today I would like to demonstrate the easy and fast maintenance of an electric heater steam humidifier from our heater line series. Before I begin with the actual maintenance of the unit, I first need to make sure that the water is drained from the steam cylinder. To do so, I press and hold the control switch in position 2. After the water is now out of the steam cylinder, I disconnect the unit from the power supply and secure it against being restarted. Now I'll go to it, open the right side of the unit. It's the electrical side. I will now verify here that we do in fact not have any electrical current on the unit. To do so, I will go and check the main contactor for any electrical current. That is not the case. Then it can be at ease, go about the unit, and now I will take off the left cover. That is the steam side where the steam cylinder is seated. You can see we have purposely put a sticker here, meaning caution, hot surface, and please, before you touch it, check from a distance how hot it actually is. Well, to get into there, I will work myself through it. I would first disconnect the system, connector here, in doing so, there will definitely be no more power on the unit. Then I go up here. These are the star screws. I unfasten the star screws. So I am later able to pull the steam hose adapter off upwards. Before I can pull at the steam hose adapter, I need to remove this clip here. I can reuse that shortly and then place it over here, where it is at hand. Now I have to pull with relative force, and then I've got the steam hose adapter up here, and I'll just use this clip again, clip it on up there, and with that the whole thing is secured up there, and so now I have my hands free in order to work on the steam cylinder. Next, I unfasten the cylinder clamping belt, and now I'm actually ready to lift the cylinder out carefully. For cylinder maintenance, we open the cylinder on top at the clamping ring. Then we can pull up the cylinder top and have the heating element out as well, which is connected to the cylinder top. You can tell that both the heating element and the cylinder still look very good. There is very little calcium residue. Normally you would find a little more, which of course all depends on the length of time the steam humidifier has been in operation. To remove the scale deposits, we would, if there is relatively little calcium residue, take a screwdriver, take the shaft end and moderately tap around on it. The scale deposits will loosen bit by bit and chip off in flakes, and we can continue working at it like that. What you shouldn't do is to try with a knife to scrape around on this to try and get it metallic bright. That would destroy the heating element. Please do not do that. When dealing with larger amounts of calcium deposits, which you might not be able to remove mechanically, we recommend placing the whole thing in a cleaning bath. Normally the cleaning agents have a certain acid content. Please make sure the acid content of the cleaning bath does not exceed 10%. When working with an acid bath, you would normally prepare the bath in a bucket and then just submerge the heating element for a certain duration. You can see how the calcium deposits dissolve. And when the heater elements are free of scale again, especially the areas between the coils, then just take it back out. The same applies for the stainless steel steam cylinder. You can first clean it mechanically, which should be enough in most cases. Should the deposits be too tough, you could place the cylinder in a cleaning bath as well. After we have cleaned the cylinder, we reassemble the whole thing. When reassembling, the O-rings should be replaced. 
in this O-ring set, you will find one black, large O-ring. This O-ring goes up here, and the area where the clamping ring will later clamp together the cylinder to the cover. This small black O-ring is the one that is used up top for the connection to the steam hose adapter. And finally we have a white O-ring, that is the silicon O-ring, which will be used later when the steam cylinder is placed in the base. Okay, I'm going to reassemble this again. To get the O-ring out of the top part, I will simply use a screwdriver and just lever it off, and then take the new O-ring and place it in up top here. Then I can reassemble everything. Before I can reassemble the stainless steel steam cylinder, I have to check what the situation is like in the base regarding deposits. The base is constructed in such a way, I'll show you an example, that there is quite a large coarse strainer inside it. Large amounts of calcium deposits can be collected in there, and so I can get the strainer out. When this is filled with deposits, it can weigh quite a bit. We have these so-called finger or access holes. Using them, I can simply pull it out, the strainer have it here, can dump out the deposits, and can then subsequently clean the strainer. Same goes, of course, for the base, where I really need to make sure all deposits are out. And of course, these passes for the hose connections in the interior must be completely free of lime scale, so the water can flow through. When I have cleaned as far, I can reassemble the strainer, and so all lines up later with the passes for the hose connections. I need to assemble the strainer with this here lug nose, and latch it in the groove, it really goes click, and then you know that the strainer is in the right position, and it can go back to doing its job. Yes, that would be the one thing, to take a look at the base, remove the deposits, and clean everything nicely. And then up here we have a second, further cylinder, this is our little control cylinder, the float switch is inside there, which always informs us where the water level is at right now. The float switch too is in constant contact with the water. There will be lime skill there as well. And knowing that, we must really see to it that all deposits are removed. To do that, I just unfasten the four screws on top here, with which the float switch is mounted there. That is, of course, a somewhat delicate spot, which does not enjoy lime scale too much, because right here is where I determine where the water level is, and that needs to be very precise. And this, for example, is also the control unit responsible for the prevention of overheating in the steam cylinder, because I can simply tell by the float switch where is the water level. And I make sure that the heating elements are always submerged in water. To clean the rod assembly, you can use some cloth, for example, combine it with lime scale remover, and then really remove all calcium residue from here completely, because these floaters must be able to float without any resistance. After I've done that, well, the condition I would like to have is a metallic sheen. I can reassemble the whole thing. I can very well use the flat seal again because it will definitely seal tight. I just have to make sure that there's no coarse residue on top here. Otherwise, it will be hard to get it to seal right. Yes, I will reassemble this, stick that up in there, check the seating of the flat seal, and then fasten the screws back on. Before we place the steam cylinder back, I need to replace the O-rings. Down here, the large white O-ring is placed, the silicon ring. You can see it is a bit oversized. That's important for it to seal correctly. That is seated properly. I'm going to wet it a bit, so I can get the steam cylinder to fit in there nicely. We have replaced another O-ring. That was the one located up here in the steam hose adapter. I will place that one too now. Wet it as well. There is always a little water down in there. I can take it from there and make it wet. And then I'll get the steam cylinder and place it back in. A guide when placing it back, you can keep in mind this symbol, caution hot surface, should face forward, then it is seated properly. I can simply place it in now. It is seated tight, 
Then I take the clamping belt and secure the cylinder. Then I remove the clip from up here. Then comes the steam hose adapter. You will need some force for this. That's in place and up here I will put the clip back on. After the steam hose adapter is seated tightly, I have attached the clip. I take the two star screws and fasten them again up here. Find the right position first. And then I can refasten it. What is still undone is to reconnect the system connector here. Check again if all hoses are in place correctly. Not that I've maybe jammed something somewhere, especially when I connected the adapter, the steam hose adapter earlier. Not that there's a cable jam somewhere. Check the hoses. Cylinder is sitting well. Looks good so far. Now I would reconnect the power supply and then let the unit run for 5 to 10 minutes in order to check and see if any leakage has occurred anywhere. And I would need to have another O-ring. Good. Let's see if everything is tight so far. I turn the unit off again to put the covers back on. And the covers are put on. Please don't forget, because it's very important, live components everywhere in the unit and no one should be able to touch them. That was all so far on maintenance on a heater line unit.